All of this be ready stuff that we heard in the gospel and that we hear many times throughout the gospels more it seems as we move into the the season of advent or even the end of the liturgical year right before the the season of advent just be ready be alert I don't know if you remember 30 some years ago or whatever the bumper sticker that said be alert America needs more alerts I guess some of you didn't see that one okay Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out. An inexhaustible treasure in heaven. For where your heart is, there also will your treasure be. People come to confession, and many of them will bring along an act of contrition. Excuse me, not an act of, an examination of conscience. I always get those church things mixed up. No. <laughs> an examination of conscience. A list of scrupulously checking yourself. Did you obey this commandment? Did you obey this part of this commandment? Did you break this little bit of this part of this commandment? So on and so forth. Some people get very, very scrupulous about that. I would offer to you that maybe a good thing for us to examine before we come to confession is not so much an examination of conscience but maybe look over our credit card statement or our checkbooks Where your heart, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be. We know all the right things to say that we value. But when push comes to shove, what are we focusing on? What are we giving our attention, our effort, our energy to? That last sentence in the gospel. If that's not challenging, if that's not in some ways scary for us as a society, a church, even a nation, it should be. Much will be required of those entrusted with much. And still more will be demanded of, the, of those entrusted with more. We talk about the great blessings. We talk about the riches We have a tendency to categorize people very often by numbers. If your number is this big, 
terms of money, wealth, possessions, then you are rich. And if somehow, maybe through beating the incredible low odds and winning a lottery, you get a lot of money, all of a sudden, you become rich in the eyes of so many. And yet there are so many poor people And a lot of these poor people are people who have a lot of money. But they're still poor. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. This Wednesday, we celebrate the Feast of St. Lawrence the Martyr. And I was doing just a little bit of, of research on Lawrence. And this author was talking about some of the legends that have accompanied Lawrence for, for centuries. He said, when Lawrence was challenged to hand over the church's treasure to the authorities, he asked for a few days' grace. Then he went all over the city, seeking out in every street the poor who were supported by the church and with whom no other was so well acquainted. On the third day, he gathered together a great number of them before the church and placed them in rows. The decrepit, the blind, the lame, the maimed, the lepers, orphans, and widows. Then he went to the prefect, invited him to come and see the treasure of the church. Riches in the kingdom have very little to do with things. Rudyard Kipling once said, Do not pay too much attention to fame, power, and money. Someday you will meet a person who cares for none of these. And then you will know how poor you really are. Is wealth bad? No. Is it an illusion? Very often. We seek after wealth so that we can, we believe, find happiness. What we think might be happiness. And yet, There are so many people who have money that are not happy. And there are many who have nothing. And yet, they seem to be the most joyful, the most alive people ever. That's what Jesus invites us to. Getting away from maybe a lot of what we've learned. You have to succeed. You have to get ahead. We've got our kids that we are sending back to school here shortly. How many of them, how many of our high schoolers, how many of our college kids feel so much pressure on themselves because they've got to succeed? By some financial definition of what success is. 
And if we don't achieve just those things, we are failures. Remember something. Especially you young people. Especially as you head off to college or to high school. Or some of you even to kindergarten this year. You got pressure on you too. A man named John Sinclair said, Failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. But what if I fail? You will. The answer to the what if question is, you will. A better question might be, after I fail, then what? Well, if you've chosen well, you will be one step closer to succeeding. You will be wiser and stronger. And you almost certainly will be more respected by all of those who are afraid to try. So folks, with all of this, what I'm talking about is the values of Jesus, the values of the kingdom that we are invited to, that we are called to embrace, as opposed to the other stuff. Much will be required of those entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of those entrusted with more. Here we are, this incredible country, and we say that our greatest resource, our greatest asset is our children. And yet, boy, we still have so much more to do for our children, for the children of our country, for the children of our world, for the children of God. It can't just be a matter of, I'll take care of my kids, everybody else, good luck to you. We have been entrusted. I'd like us tonight to take a moment and pray for our children and pray for our children. We pray for children who sneak popsicles before supper, who erase holes in math workbooks, and who can never find their shoes. And we pray for those who have never run down the street in a new pair of sneakers who are born in places where we wouldn't be caught dead, who never go to the circus, who live in an uncaring or violent world. We pray for children who give sticky kisses and fistfuls of dandelions, who hug their moms in a hurry and forget their lunch money. And we pray for those children who never get dessert, who have no safe blanket to drag behind them, who watch their parents watch them die, who don't have any rooms to clean up, whose pictures aren't on anybody's dresser, or whose monsters are real. We pray for children who spend all their allowance before Tuesday, who throw tantrums in the grocery store and pick at their food, who like ghost stories, who shove dirty clothes under the bed and never rinse out the tub who get visits from the tooth fairy, 
who don't like to be kissed in front of their friends, who squirm in church and scream in the phone, whose tears adults sometimes laugh at, and whose smiles can make adults cry. And we pray for those whose nightmares come in the daytime, who will eat anything, who have never seen a dentist, who aren't spoiled by anybody, who go to bed hungry and cry themselves to sleep. We pray for children who want to be carried. And for those who need to be carried. For those who have plenty of opportunities. And for those who don't get a second chance. And for those who get plenty of attention and affection. And for those who will grab the hand of anybody kind enough to offer it. Much will be required of those entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of those entrusted with more. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be.